Let's uh, let's dive into week eight of the NFL. We're going to go through our preview first. Of course, we will have our picks at the end, our official picks, right? Our, the ones that we've got money on. These are the ones that I've got money on, that Chris has money on. So, we will discuss those at the end of this. Uh, but we're talking about the biggest and most interesting games of the week right now. Starting off with Thursday night, we got a divisional game between the Atlanta Falcons, who maybe could not be any worse, and the Carolina Panthers. And they are playing in Charlotte. Should be uh, an interesting game. The last one was, certainly. I, you know, I I did not write down these lines because I wanted to pull them up on this because they this were moving so fast. This one should be two and a half. Two and a half. So, yep, two and a half sitting across the way. Uh, thoughts here. Thoughts, I mean, Carolina won the first one in, in Atlanta, and I kind of feel like this one's going to go the same way. I, I like Carolina minus two and a half here. I like Carolina minus two and a half. Atlanta is creating new ways to make math obsolete in football. I mean, they they have on a regular basis have like 99.99999% winning probabilities. And, and still cock lose. Those, cock those games up. They, I, they've I, lost three games in which they had a 96% chance of winning in the last two minutes. Yeah, and, uh, well, more than 96%. So I was just about to say some of those are a lot better than that. Oh. Uh, the, the 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 Panthers are somebody said uh, Casey just said the Panthers are just a better coached y- yeah hundred percent they're just I think they're a better football team I really do yeah I think they are too I mean they're better coached they got uh they got better players I th- right well, now I, right now I would trust Teddy trust Teddy well over Matt Ryan well over Matt Ryan um you know I I just think. I think that team's playing better. I don't know if McCaffrey's going to be back or not. I've I've heard that there's a chance he comes back. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Um, but I, I I don't even know that they need him. He's they've played great without him. Mike Davis has been good, and I just think they're a more complete team. And I'm kind of surprised Atlanta is it like still showing up and competing as a team together. Usually by this point in time, you start seeing like. Cowboys types of dysfunction going on. We're fighting in the locker room and people calling out folks in the media. I, I will tell you that I'm I'm kind of surprised we're not getting that with how badly some of these games have gone for them. At the well, the other side of this is you know teams that get complacent, right? I, like I don't think that they're necessarily playing for each other or anything like that. I think Atlanta is just trying to get through the season. Like I, I think I think they got a lot of mature guys that have been in this league for a while. But they're they're not childish enough to come out and, and blame anybody for it. It's just you know, okay, the coach is gone. Like, what what are we going to do? Sit here and bitch about it? Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> at this point, it's like let's just get the season done with. We're gonna go out and play, and we'll see where the chips fall, and we'll go from there. So, uh, Birdie said, no concern with the defensive injuries for the Panthers. Only thing keeping me off of it, I lean Panthers as well. It's same here. Like at, at Atlanta's had so many. So many issues, and and it doesn't matter with the defensive injuries when it comes to the Falcons, you know. Like I, no, I, I just I think it, I I don't know. I can't I can't figure out why the Atlanta is this bad, but I just I've, I I kind of thought they were going to be bad before the season started. Thought they'd get four wins. Man, they they're going to struggle to find four wins. And they most certainly are. Most certainly are. Let's move on. We'll move to Sunday, and this is the noon slate, of course. Central Time Zone, God's Time Zone, of course. The Colts traveling to Detroit. The Lions picked up Everson Griffin. Did you see that? I did. So I, they feel like they can make a playoff push, and I am all right with that. Like I, I, I think they might have a shot at this. Uh, Lions are catching two and a half uh, at home, and it, this thing is all over the board. This is part of the reason why I didn't write why I didn't write these lines down. Uh, you can get three, you can get two and a half, you can uh, you can get one and a half at Bavada. I mean, three, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. I mean. So I guess most of the uh, the books have two and a half here. So we'll roll with that as the official line. We we both like Carolina minus two and a half. Uh, as far as Detroit, they are plus two and a half at home against the Colts. I I kind of like them in this spot. The ticket count has got uh, a lot of Colts love, sixty seven percent on the Colts. But I I think I like the Lions in this spot. Am I crazy? No, I mean, I think if you made me pick, I would take the Lions and the points. I don't like it. I don't like it enough to play it. And, and, and the only caveat that I have for this game is Frank Wright, two weeks to prepare. I, I, 
I don't know that he's been a head coach long enough for us to have good numbers on this, but I just trust really good coaches coming off bye weeks. Well, how long has he been a head coach? Is it three years? Two now? years. This is probably his third year. This is Andrew Luck retired before his first last year there. Year. That was last year. Holy crap. This is his second year as a head coach. So he, no, no, no. He got that first year with him because he took him to the playoffs. So with that said, That's I right. can, uh, this is third. I can look this up and tell you. Uh, but I mean, he's so he's only off. got, but he's only had two bye weeks. So, so he's even a, if yeah. he's lost both of them or won both of them, it doesn't tell us anything. Yeah. It's not like a, uh, it, it's not a, uh, yeah. a trend or anything like no, that. It's not, but, that, that, that doesn't, that, so the numbers don't matter, but, but that's just one of those things where I trust really good coaching off of buys. Like I said, I don't, I don't know if it leans anything or not, but that's the only reason it's a stay away from me. Cause originally I was kind of talking myself into the lions as a, as an actual pick. And, and, and I'm off of that. They had uh let's see, they are one, one and one off buys the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't be one, one, and one. Oh, that doesn't help because he hasn't been the coach for three years. No, he has been the coach for three years. Twenty seventeen, they made the playoffs with him. Twenty eighteen is when. Uh, uh, so uh, wait, wait, is it twenty eighteen? That's not Gary. That's not true. He was with the he was with the Eagles when they won their Super Bowl three years ago. Huh. Let's see. So that's just not real. Whatever you're looking at, it's not right. <laughs> All right, so if it's just the I last was, two I was years, in Las Vegas when they beat the Vikings. Well, let's see. Coming off bye weeks the last two years, uh, they are, let's well, see. Worst case scenario, they're one and one. They're one and one. So they, they beat Houston off a of bye last year, and they uh, they beat Jacksonville off a of bye the year before that, but they pushed the spread. So, so they're one oh and one Okay. So, yeah, I mean, they're yeah they're one oh and one with him. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, no, I just uh, like I said, I just trust. I just trust teams. A good coaches coming off buys. That's all. That's I, I don't have any science behind. It, I don't have any logic behind. It, I don't have any numbers behind it. That's the reason it scared me off. I think this Lions team is better than people give them credit for. But you know, I I, I wouldn't put good money on on Philip Rivers right now at all. That's that's where I'm coming from with this, right? Uh, Casey K jumped in. Love the Colts in this spot. Damian said the Colts win. And Birdie said, I'm with you on the Lions. If I put both teams on paper, I, I like uh, the Lions offense over the Colts, and I believe the Lions are getting healthy on D, and they're underrated. That's that's kind of where I am. Like, I, I think Matt Patricia has got this team believing a little bit. Like, I, I don't know that they're going to make it to the playoffs. I don't know. But I do know that they play pretty well at home, and I don't have a whole lot of faith in Phillip Rivers. So, that's, so yeah. That's that's the thing. So Give me uh, give me the Lions. You're taking the same thing, huh? Yeah, I'll take them if I have to. All right, uh, Vikings at the Packers, and this was just a bloodbath in week one. I mean, good gracious, that that's when we kind of got an idea of, oh, okay, well, um, <laughs> it, it appears that we are going to have a good uh, pissed-off Aaron Rodgers this year. And, you know, at Green Bay, coming off a not-great-looking performance, I guess you could say, against the uh, the Bucks, and then last week was whatever, Uh you know, they're favored by six and a half, seven. You know, it, it's pretty even across the board. Wherever you want to do it, go shop over at sbrodds.com. Uh, we will set seven as our official line here. Uh, I don't think it matters. Like, I, I think the Packers are so much better. I think the Vikings have uh, have sold the farm. I think they are, you know, packing it up, going home. I don't think they care about this game. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Jeremy Ring, uh, Renninger jumps in. It'll be a slaughter this time around, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm looking at. Like that, that's that's what it reads to me. Is there any hope for the Vikings? I don't think so. I don't. I mean, Kirk Cousins just is the quarterback that can duel uh, Aaron Rodgers at all. I, you know, like I don't know if it matters about Dalvin Cook. Um, I I just don't think I don't think it matters. Like Dalvin Cook is back at practice this week. I mean, maybe he makes some kind of... He didn't in week one. Like, I don't know why it would... You know, Casey jumps in. Vikings are tanking. Uh, Damien said Zimmerman's getting fired. I don't know if he's getting fired. That that, that front office loves him. So, I, I don't think that he's got any any danger this season. But we will see. Uh, do you see I don't Damien? think he has any danger, but I, I, I would agree. I don't think he's getting fired. But at the same time, now, you never I don't know. know that. I mean, if it goes bad enough, you never they've, know. They've been bad. 
Uh, Damian jumped in. Matt Patricia sucks as a head coach. Uh, he hadn't really been dealt a fair hand as of yet. So let, let's just let's hold off on that. I, I don't think he's as bad as you would think he is. Uh, we both rolling Green Bay? Yep. All right. Uh, staying in the noon slot, which, again, ton of noon games this week. Like, we had gotten to a point where we were kind of splitting them up. Man. Well, just last week they split them up. That's it. Yeah. I mean, just uh, just ridiculous. A ton of games. Uh, your Patriots headed to Buffalo this week. Uh, looks like the the line for the most part is three and a half. Now you can find a four out there. You can find well, you can find four at a couple of different spots. Uh, but Bills minus three and a half here. I the Bills haven't looked great by any stretch of the imagination. They got uh, two butt whippings, and then they did not look good against the Jets. They didn't even score a touchdown. Is this the game where they kind of get it figured out? Have they just been saving up for this one? I don't think they're saving up for anything. That's not Bill's way. I think he's trying. I, I know this. This is their only opportunity to make the playoffs. They you got wait, you talking about game. the Patriots or the Bills? The Patriots. Ah, yeah, no, okay, okay. Yeah. They have to win this game. They have to compete for the division because they, they're not getting a wild card spot, even though they've added another one. They, they still... They're too far back, and they're not playing well enough. Um, there's a world in which I don't see the Patriots winning this game, but I also wonder, is this the kitchen sink game? Is this the game Bill just throws everything he has, you know, at, at a divisional opponent and says, we're not losing this? I don't know how we're going to win it, but we're not losing this. Offensively, they're bad. They're real bad. I mean, they're in the conversation – with the Jets as as just just being offensively inept. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're right. And I wonder about the Bills as well, right? Because it, they just have not looked good the last few weeks, and I don't know what that necessarily means, if there's some yeah, But they've issues. also played some really good opponents the last two weeks, Gary. Well, yeah, but I mean, they, they didn't but they they play the, good against the Jets, and I don't know what that's about. That's I can't what I'm explain saying. that. All okay. right? I, I wonder but if that was a letdown spot. That, they, they played two of the best teams in the league. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. Uh, Joseph Gomez jumped in and said, wait a minute, just checked in. Why are the guns out today? Who's packing lethal weapons? Uh, <laughs> man, I'm just wearing a shirt. I swear to God. Uh, well, you're, you're wearing kind of a shirt. That's I'm wearing like half of a shirt. Like it's, a, you know, I ain't got the nips out today. I'm just, I'm hanging out. It is what it is. Damien said, this is going to be a tie. Uh, Casey said the Patriots are the lock of the week because no one's going to bet them, including me. Uh, Joseph said, already seeing fours. Is Cam starting this week? Uh, so far, no. Bill Belichick has come out and said, Cam is our best chance at winning. And I think he's probably right. You know, I don't know. It's, that's, but here's the problem. Our, the issue with the Patriots is not the quarterback so much. The quarterback's not great. They have no talent on that offensive side of the ball at all at the skill players. They got a yeah. shitload of running backs. They don't have a receiver that could catch a cold. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked about that, you know, on Monday's show when the, in the recap. I mean, they, they are dreadfully inept at the yes. skill positions. And – it, there's there's no fixing that. It, it, when nope. you're going up against a good defense, and the Bills, I believe, are still a good defense. Uh, Sean McVay will have, not McVay, uh, McDermott will have something, you know, set up for this. Uh, Jeremy Renninger, hard to lay points with the Bills when they couldn't put up a touchdown against the Jets. And That's the true. That's I, I'll tell you this. I do think the only way you can bet this game is if you take the Patriots. You either take the Patriots in the points or you don't play it at all. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going Buffalo. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I think that takes balls. I, I, I like Buffalo in this spot. Um, the, the ticket count over at SBR is is not crazy. It's 46% on New England, 54 on Buffalo. I Okay. I mean, I... But that's what they're supposed to do is get 50-50. Yeah, agreed. And that's that's what I'm saying is I, I don't think this is like a a crazy one-sided, like it, there's only one way you can bet it. Like I, no, I'm telling you the only logic that I can find is, as you play the Patriots, take the points or you can't play it. I, I'll tell you what I will be playing is uh, I do like the under 42 and a half here. Like, I don't think either I, one of these teams could score. No, my pro my, my problem with that is, is the Patriots will take the ball away at least twice, at least twice. And if they score on those, you're screwed. Uh, you might be right. 
But even still, if if that's all they score is, uh, but that's not going to be all they score, Gary. They're going to get in field goal range. They're going to all right. Like, so kick, kick two field goals, and then you got me twenty points here. Uh, you know, like I, <laughs> I don't feel terrible about that. I, I could see a twenty to seventeen game here. But then you lose your other bet. I, it is no. I'm I'm not going to put money. Well, maybe I am. Yeah, I'm going to put money on the Bills. I'm betting the Bills. <laughs> I don't think the Patriots can score, and I don't know that the Patriots are going to be able to score off of defensive picks. I just, I, well, I mean, we'll I know, see. I know this. I know this. If you can, if the Patriots can run the football, they're going to win this game. If they can't, they're going to lose it, and they're going to lose it in dramatic fashion. And see, that's that's the thing. Like you're going up against this Bills defense, which is known for stopping the run. Now, Ed, the Chiefs were say, able to run are it. They? Are yeah. we sure? I mean, it, are we you, sure they're known for stopping the run? You got a you got a valid point there. You got a valid point. Damien jumps in, said Gary auditioning for the next Magic Mike movie. That's why he's showing all that skin. Casey said Cam is going to have twenty plus runs this week. Yep. Um that would be my game plan. Birdie agrees with you. He said, "Can you give me, Gary? Can you give me one big game that Allen has played well in?" I mean, he wasn't terrible in the uh, in the playoff game last year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Gary, you can't say that. That's just not true. I know, I know, I know. Look, at Josh Allen didn't great, but I feel a little bit better with him than I do with Cam Newton right now. Like, I just, I, I don't, I was all over the Patriots last week. And that 49ers team with all those injuries it just came in and completely demolished them. And I understand that it's a different week. It's a new season. It's a new da 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 I also know that the Bills have been waiting for this year for Tom Brady to be gone. I feel like they are going to be absolutely motivated in this spot. I, give me the Bills. Because the they Bills. haven't been motivated the last couple of years. No, they've been motivated, but the, the Patriots have been so much better than them. And I don't think the Patriots are better than them this year. Okay. So, it is what it is. You are rolling pats. I'm rolling Bills. And we will continue on. Uh, go ahead and remind everybody, go over to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. You can find the lines for these NFL games over there as well. Just click on odds up at the top of the uh, the page there. And make sure that you check out the YouTube page. We go live on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Saturdays. You guys will find the schedule. It's very easy to do. You can also find us over at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe to the podcast, etc. Make sure you like this video. Like the video. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. There you go. Raiders headed to your Cleveland Browns. The Browns are a two-and-a-half-point favorite right now uh, at the majority of spots. And I, you know, I I don't know why so many people love Vegas. I, I mean, I love, I think the Browns are going to be able to run the football all over them. Am I correct? Like, maybe I'm nuts. I just... I don't... I, I'm a little worried about this game. I think the Browns are good at beating up bad teams, and they struggle with good teams. I don't think the Raiders are a good team, but they're not a bad team either. No, they're not bad, but I, I also don't think that their run defense is is all that good. I don't think it's all that much to write home about. It, it, it doesn't matter. We we saw we saw Joey Burrow and the and the Bengals go back and forth tit for tat with the Browns all day long. This is going to be who gets the ball last. And if, and if you lose the coin flip or you don't get the ball last or you make a weird mistake or you turn the ball over, which Baker's really good at doing, um, then, then yeah, you could get got pretty easily. So, so you're going to ride with the Raiders? I'm not riding with the Raiders. I'm telling you why people think that that could okay. happen. Okay. Well, which, which way are you going and why? I'm, I'm going to take my Browns, Gary. But that doesn't mean <laughs> it's the right way to go. Putting well, your faith I, in Baker is a, is a fool man's game. I'm just telling you that. But I don't have to put it in Baker in this game. Yes, you do. No. Yes, you do. If you think Hunt is going to carry them, you're wrong. Okay, then I will I will be wrong. But I don't think it's just Hunt. I think it's all those other guys that they got back there. And I think that the uh, the Browns' defense is going to be just fine. I like I Cleveland. Hope so. I like Cleveland in this Look, spot. I hope so. I'm just telling you. Baker's... Baker's been really good at being bad. And if you're putting your faith in my Brownies defense, which I love Miles, I love him, I do. They, the Bengals didn't punt last week. Let's see. Birdie said, uh, I just worked. Did you so, hear that? Yeah, I know they didn't punt. I know. And like, I, I, but I, that's Joe Burrow. Like, I, I don't think Derek Carr is Joe Burrow. Hang on. You don't think the Raiders' offense is better than the Bengals' offense? I don't think. Okay. Let's look at it this way. 
I think that the guy calling the shots, right, out on the field, I think that he is not as good as Joe Burrow. Okay, I 100% agree at the quarterback position. They're not the same. At every other level of the game offensively, the Raiders are better. At coaching and play calling, at offensive line, at at skill players. I am at, shocked. At every other level, I they're better than the Bengals. I cannot believe that you were trying to talk me off of the Browns. No, it- I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you to make it sound like the Raiders are a bad team is no, just not, they're not real. They're not a bad team. I just don't think they're a great team. Like I, I, don't, I you don't have to be great to beat this shit Browns team. <laughs> the Bengals didn't punt, Gary. Yes, and the Brownies still won the game. Like <laughs> And it's true. You know I'm not lying. Like I that was a different week. It's just a different week. I Baker's feel good about the, pulling those Baker's not pulling those miracles out of his ass. He's going to cost us this game. You are secretly worry not worrying. You are secretly hoping that Baker fails so you can get Case Keenum in there nope. so you can go on a playoff run, right? I don't I don't want I don't want Baker to fail. I just know he's going to, Gary. I know he's going to. Like that's the difference. Is is I know this team. I know what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. That's that's the difference. No, you 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 have a very good point about that. You watch a lot do more. Do I Browns want him to fail? No, that's stupid to want him to fail. I want success for my team. He's never played great two games in a row. He's that's, he's that's just true. he just he's just not consistent. Last I, week in that unbelievable performance, he made two passes that didn't go to his first read. He can't read a defense, Gary. Well, I will tell you this. I think that he will be better served to not have OBJ out there. That's stupid. Uh, you, That's you can just, call that me crazy. Argument is, that argument is dumb. You I've can, heard too many people trying to sell that shit. You, you, You're not better without with less talent. That's just not how football works. Okay. Okay. Birdie, uh, Birdie jumped in on the chat. I just worry uh, Josh Allen's going to turn the ball over, uh, but because I have no play, I'm fully rooting for you. So, there you go. Uh, Jerry McArdle, you cannot compare the 49ers to the Bills. Garoppolo knows how to win. Casey K said, love the Raiders' money line. Browns are going to struggle without OBJ, said Damian. Uh, Casey said, Kareem Hunt is the truth, but it is a must win for Vegas. Uh, Birdie said, you've got one team on a massive high off an emotional win against the team who got spanked with a pissed-off coach. I take the Raiders here just because of the spot. Uh, Jeremy said, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I trust Derek Carr with the football more than Baker. And oh, yeah. Casey said, oh, man. That's, that's a uh, understatement of the year. Casey said, man, the Browns would be nasty with Grant Delpit and Greedy back. Uh, and I agree about the OBJ thing. I feel like it's a lot of pressure on Baker. That's that's where I'm at. Like His numbers when he targets OBJ are putrid. They are Terrible. That doesn't mean you're better without him. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We get to see it this week. We saw it last week, you know. I mean, he got hurt early last week. He got so. hurt on the first play of the game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And why did he get hurt, whole game. Game. Why did he get hurt? Why did he get hurt? Trying to make a tackle on an interception. No. <laughs> but that's OBJ's fault, though, right? No, it's not. That he grossly uh, underthrew the ball? Grossly underthrew the ball? Birdie said, agreed, he can only get to his first look. If that look is uh, is you, Kroos, he is looking he is looking for you. OBJ injury being way overreacted. Um, and that, that, That's my thing. Like, I, I, I don't think that this team is necessarily worse without OBJ. But, uh, Chris, I will gladly admit that I am wrong if, in fact, I am wrong. And we will get some more data this weekend, and we'll figure it out. But they won last week without him, so... You know, we'll see. Obviously, Bengals, Raiders, not the same thing. But either way, let's move on. This is a uh, a big game, if only because a lot of people are going to be watching to see what happens with Tua Tagovailoa, the new starting quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. They are, at, I'm going to put our line for winning cures everything purposes at three and a half uh, because that is, that is where it is most of the places you can get four at multiple spots, but the majority of them are sitting at three and a half right now. Uh, 54% of the tickets are on the Rams. This is a noon Eastern time, well, 1 p.m. Eastern time kick. And the Rams have got to travel across country on a short week. You know, I, I like the Dolphins here. Like, I don't know what two is going to be, and it terrifies me. Like, this is, this is Alex Smith level cringe, right? When, when Alex Smith took the field for the first time after however long, every, drop back that he made, I felt like his leg was going to fall off. 
right? This is to his first game back since the hip injury. Like, it, it first full game. He played, like, what, three plays last week? No, uh, he, and two the plays. last we, week was a bye. The week but yeah, before, I'm t- the week before. The week that. before, he played, a, like, a lot of the fourth quarter because they were up by 30. Yeah, he, he had, like, two dropbacks, though. Three dropbacks. He was, like, two out of three or something like that, whatever it was. But you um, can't say that he played three snaps. He threw the ball three times. Yes, That's different and, and he than handed it, 10 snaps. I understand. He handed the ball off several times, right? The game was done. It was whatever. But now Tua is going to be the guy, and he's got to go up against Aaron Donald. And I don't know how much I trust this Dolphins offensive line. So that's a little bit frightening, right? I'm, I'm a little worried about that because obviously, you know, I'm a Tua fan. I am very curious about this because the Dolphins, I still think, I don't think they're quitting on this season because they swapped quarterbacks. I think they still got guys that want to win. I think Brian Flores has that locker room and those guys play for that coach. I think they're going to be fired up for this spot. It's a bad spot for the Rams. I like the Dolphins plus the three and a half here. Yeah, uh, I give me the Rams. <laughs> They're a better football team. They're just a better team. That's a, it. It's funny. We talked so much about the Bears last week, and man, that's it. Rams did look good on Monday night. I mean they they stomped them. Hey, um, hey, you know we're gonna get to the Bears here in just a minute. Uh, biggest game of the noon slate is the Steelers and the Ravens. And have people just forgotten about Baltimore? I mean, what like nobody talks about them? What happened here? Like, they're, they're four-point favorites here at five in some spots, four, four-and-a-half, five. Um, let's see. Uh, no, I'm wrong. It was up at, like, five, and now it's down to four it and three-and-a-half. seven. Yeah, it's it's way, way down. Uh, 66% of the tickets on Pittsburgh. And, look, I, I bet against Pittsburgh last week, but it's not like they looked great to me. They looked good in the first half, and then I saw what they really were in the second half, and if it wasn't for a missed field goal, they would have given up a 20-point lead and had to go into overtime. So this, this team is six and zero, oh, but they are still complete and utter frauds. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. I, There's I, no way on earth you can trust them going into a big game. You just can't. Big Ben turned it over how many times? Three, three. Yeah, three interceptions. Yep. And and that's enough to to lose a ball game in most cases. Yeah, so, I can't, that, that the only reason that they didn't lose is because the Titans played so poorly in the first half. It was uh, it it was, it was a fun game. It was, uh, I mean, what, who, who called it? Like two heavyweight boxers. Like, it, you know, somebody gets one round, the other one gets the other round, and then we'll just see what happens in the playoffs or whatever. But uh, so we, we got a bunch of guys jumping in the comments here. Lamar Jackson is overrated. Steelers destroy them. That was Casey. Uh, Damien said Steelers going to the Super Bowl. Uh, Andres Morales said 6-0, and but Miss Flawed. Uh, Birdie, love the Ravens here, and you all know how much I like the Steelers with the Ravens of the play. Um, Ryan Kennedy pit in the points with the under, um, you know, I, I will say this, a lot of these games between these two end up being field goal games. So the fact that it's, you know, three and a half, four, like that kind of makes you wary, but why on earth was the line seven, right? Like, I think Vegas knows something like I, I just, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to bet against the Steelers again. I think this will be a field goal game. Give me the Steelers. Give me the Steelers plus plus four or play. Yeah, what what are we gonna set our line at four? Yeah, it's four. Four is good. Four is a good number. Um, yeah, I'll, number. I'll set the Steelers at, at four. So you That's, taking the Ravens? Yes. I taking Lamar. I think this offense is going to be really really good, and and I think this defense is going to make Ben look real bad, real bad. This will be the best defense he's played all year. Yeah. Yeah, I think you uh, think you might be right. Um, let's see, jumping back into all of these, Toby Lane. Uh, it was against the poor Bengals early or uh, or not. It has been terrible for them. Talk, this is talking about Browns, whatever. Browns six and two going into the bye week. Said Ryan Casey loved the Dolphins money line. Tua worries me a little, but he had two weeks to prepare. Darren said Rams will win. Tua is too soon to be put in. Zamora said we're in here thinking of uh, Colts minus two and a half, Raiders plus three, Green Bay minus seven, Seahawks minus three. Dropping in his lines. Uh, Steve Smith, I never would have guessed Gary had a tattoo. Uh, yeah, I got, got multiple. Got multiple. I keep them hidden up, though. Uh, Rams D-line is going to be all over to us at Jeremy Renninger. Uh, let's see. Andres Morales, give me the Rams. Defensive line looks like the one that made the Super Bowl run a couple of years ago, going up against a rookie making his first NFL start. 
And Damien said, Tua's going to be the next Alex Smith. Sad to say, but it's true. Damien just wants to shit all over both of our teams. Both Whoever we like, he is going to crap on them. I see it. Uh, Casey, Dolphins win the division if Tua doesn't get hurt. Uh, I mean, who knows? And then Damien said, damn you, Magic Mike. So, um, let's move into the afternoon slate. I want to talk about what happened on Monday Night Football. So, let's do Saints-Bears. And that line currently is sitting at Saints minus, I will say four. So, there's a four and a half and a three out there. But typically, everywhere else, it is at four. So, the Bears catching four points at home. And did you hear what Brian Greasy said on Monday Night Football about what Nick Foles told him in one of their meetings? Uh, about Nat Nagy? About Nagy calling plays and not understanding how much time he has <clears throat> yeah. back there. So, first off, I want to ask, do you think Brian Greasy crossed any lines there? Nope. I, I feel like... That was, you, a, that was a meeting that he had with somebody in the media that's about to call this game. I think he has a right to tell any story that happens in that meeting. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Unless you specifically say... You cannot put this out there. This is off the record. Yeah. Then I think you. Then I think you absolutely have fair game to share that. You. I you think you have, have an to, obligation to share that. Yes, that is like important information. So, and I, I found it incredibly interesting because I think that's a fireable offense for Nagy. By the way, I think it is too. I think it doesn't matter if it's Trubisky or Foles back there if the wrong plays are being called. Yeah. Like it, one. If you're a Foles, veteran, a veteran like, quarterback who's seen defenses and knows what offensive play calling is like, who's worked under Frank Wright, who's worked under uh, Andy Reid, who's worked under you know Doug Marone, some of the best play callers in football, regardless of what you think of them as coaches, he knows he knows what goes into calling what play, and and I don't think Nagy does. I don't think he does either. That it blows my mind. I mean it. It, we we thought so highly of him initially, but he was an offensive guy that came in there and they won with defense in his first season. I mean, it was all defense. It, it's kind of the same thing with Dan Quinn, right? It, he was supposed to be this defensive guru coming over from Seattle, and then they won with offense. And what does that say about your, your head coach if they're not winning with the thing that got them the job to begin with? Yeah. I mean, this is a, a bit of a problem. Uh, Birdie said, uh, laugh my ass off, I think Gary is, uh, let's see, is just taking the opposite side of me on purpose. Uh, love the shirt, dude. <laughs> Trying to kill me today. Ryan Kennedy, there's no easy pick. Uh, Casey K said, Nick Foles called out Nagy and the rigged NFL. Birdie said, totally agree, men. Nagy has won games off a great defense. His offensive have been hot garbage. Nagy is in way over his head. Yes, I don't think it is a problem with Foles. I don't think Foles is an issue. I think that we've got uh, just terrible play calling I don't understand what they're doing with Anthony Miller. Like, yeah, I understand that you and I might be a little bit biased because he played at Memphis, but this kid makes plays almost every time they target him. I mean, the, yeah. the one-handed grab that he made was unbelievable. He, he shows that he's got the talent to be targeted a lot more than he is. And he got targeted twice. Yeah. No, I, mean, I don't I don't, I don't. have the answer, man. They're not getting the I playmakers of the ball. No. No, Allen Robinson is a top five wide receiver in this league, and he's just not able to put up the numbers because they can't get him the ball. Mm. It's just I mean, it's, it sucks. It's a shame, and I don't know how to fix it. I just know that, that Nagy's not good. Uh, Saints, it, do you feel like every game from here on is kind of a must win? Like they, they have to have these games? Like, um, I mean, if they're trying to keep pace with the Bucks, yeah. I, I feel the same way. I, I, I know this game's in Chicago. But I, I don't think it matters here. I think the Saints are a significantly better team. Um, I mean, give me give me the Saints. I think they're just better rounded. So I'm I'm gonna go opposite of you here. Okay. I'm gonna take the Bears. I wonder if they're a team that just every other week they look really good and every other week they look like crap. Now they've still strung wins together, but some of these games they've won looking bad. Give me the Bears. I think there's a world in which Drew Brees might not be good. I mean, he is older. And when I don't know that he's played a lot of good defenses lately. And I just wonder, can this bears team rattle him? Uh, you might I also a like a little more information on Michael Thomas. <laughs> That's yes. that would be something that I would like to know last. Uh, what was it? Sunday night. You were either over here yeah. or Tuesday Sun- night. Sunday. It was last night. Well, no. Yeah. Last night. Well, I was, oh, I was, was there it? both, but last night. Well, yeah, but it was last night when we got the, when we got the tweet that said, um, 
a reporter asking, is Michael Thomas practicing? And the quote from the wide receivers coach said, he's not even practicing. He's out, man. He, he He's not even on the field. That's – wait, was that Thomas or was that Rondo Moore? That was Michael Thomas. Oh, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't, Gary. You're but right. I, I, I know this. We, we saw a tweet nope. where Michael Thomas, uh, it appears, is on the trade block. No, yeah, but that was it. That's my problem is we were reading Michael Thomas tweets, and then it was a Rondell Moore tweet that I that I read that, and I got those two confused. You're 100% right. That was Michael Moore, uh, Rondell Moore. Uh, I still don't know if Michael Thomas is going to play or not, though. Oh, no, I I'd, I'd, I'd seriously doubt he is. I mean, he's listed as questionable. He... Like, things are just not going well in that locker room for him. What is and Casey's deal with the rigged NFL? Come on, man. Uh, Nobody's – no, this shit ain't rigged. I, You know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Jeremy Renninger said, Allen Robinson top five is a bold statement. Uh, Ryan Kennedy uh, – I, I don't think that's bold at all. Ryan I Kennedy. think you put, him, you put him in any other capable, competent offense, and his numbers go through the roof. I know he's got a ton of talent. I know the that. dude has never had anybody not named Nick Foles or Blake Blake Bortles or uh, or uh, Mitch Trubisky be his quarterback. Okay, yeah, never. Yeah. It's pretty insane. God, if I was a wide receiver, I'd be so irritated being in that room. Uh, Ryan Kennedy said Saints will win. Chicago's really bad. Alabama could beat them. Uh, absolutely not, sir. Absolutely not. Uh, Bears are better than the Rams and the Saints, but the Saints will win this game. Uh, the Bears just got beat by the Rams. Um, so it got handled. So anyway, uh, Nagy at this point will have to give up play calling at some point. As much as I like him as a uh, uh, head coach, uh, that was Carlos. Nagy is a good coach, just doing what Vegas tells him to. Yeah. <laughs> you might be right about that. If the Bears can't run the football, I just don't think they can throw on the Saints and win. Gary, we agree on one. I'm hitting it for ten units. Uh, Casey said not all games, and Damian said Bears going to need a miracle this weekend without Robinson. I didn't realize Robinson was out. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Is that it, well? Hey, you know what? I'm gonna trust Damien with it because I know he's a Bears fan, so he's he's gonna be all over that. Uh, so yeah, nah, I'm not trusting Damien. Give me, he'd, give me. He'd, he'd absolutely lie to us. <laughs> Damien would probably lie. You're right. Uh, the Saints have won their last two games by three points apiece. So the fact that this line is four kind of terrifies me. But I will. I'll take the Saints. Give me the Saints. So you still taking Chicago here? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take Chicago. All right, sounds good to me. And then uh, the last afternoon game, the 49ers at the Seahawks. Seahawks, uh, you can find it all over the board. There's a four out there. There's two and a half. There's threes. Uh, we're going to set it at three for our um, for our official line, our picks or whatever. Uh, here we go. He said Robinson out with uh, concussion protocol. So Yeah, I was just reading that. Why does he probably out? He's in the concussion protocol. That doesn't mean he's out. Either way. I don't know that they can get him the ball anyway. So, well, it matters of him being on the field, but he's in concussion protocol. Okay. 49ers and the Seahawks. 49ers looked fantastic against New England. Um, so, of course, the line here that opened at seven in favor of Seattle is all the way down to two and a half or three. And everybody seems to be loving San Francisco. The issue here is even though that line is moving down, the tickets are split. It's 51-49 in favor of Seattle. So, that kind of makes me a little wary. Um, which, which way, like, I I don't even know which way I'm leaning here. Uh, Russ did not look good last week. It leads me to believe that Seattle is going to come back out and look like gangbusters this weekend. That's my initial thought process. But I could be steered one way or the other. Like, wait, do you got any strong lean here? No, my, my first thought was the exact same thing. Is I, I feel like there's no way Russ has two bad weeks in a row. He's going to come out looking like game busters and just put up points and droves. Uh, but then again, I mean, the 49ers are playing better. I know that dudes are hurt, and this week is another laundry list of guys that are going to be out. They just seem to find a way to muster up a defense. Now, this offense is a hell of a lot harder to game plan for than the Patriots offense. So, um, I, I, st- I like Seattle. If I got to make a pick, I'm making Seattle pick. I almost made them one of my gambling picks, but that's, I, I thought the same thing. I'm, I'm rolling Seattle minus three here. Um, but I, I mean, I don't feel great about it, but no, I don't, I don't have to. So this division is weird. And I think these teams are going to beat up on one another. Yes, they are. At the, hey, 
it, it's a little crazy. It is possible, like mathematically, it is possible for all four teams to get into the playoffs this year. That they would need the Saints to fall off a cliff. Yes, yes, they would. I don't think the that's only out of the realm way of they don't is 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 if the Saints and the Bucks, one of those teams, fall off a cliff. Yep. But yep. there's nobody else in in the in the East or in the North that are going to make it make a run. I mean, I guess the Bears technically are still pretty much alive. I mean, they've got two losses, right? Yeah, I mean, they're five and two. They got a shot. Yeah, but no, they're still can, really good. And, and with three fall playoff off, teams, these other teams are going to going to beat each other up. So this, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch going down. Yep. going down the the way Sunday night football is Dallas and Philadelphia. And we got a line. You see it? Nope. It just popped up. Just popped up. Pinnacle seven and a half in favor of the Eagles with a total of 43 and a half. Now we got no idea what's going to happen with that uh, Cowboys uh, quarterback situation, but I mean, (laughs) this is going to be such a disaster. Like I cannot believe that Sunday night football is rolling with this. And you and I have talked about this before, about flexing the schedule, all that kind of stuff. But, man, I, this is about as bad a game as you can get. And maybe it's going to be such a car wreck that a lot of people will tune in to watch just to see which one of these teams ends up losing. Um, I think whores, the Eagles... Whores to ratings. They're just all whores. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, they gotta they got to make that cheddar, I guess. Whatever. Uh, They're already making the cheddar. I know. You're right about that. I like the Eagles here. I, this this Cowboys team is so done. They are I hate betting on the Eagles. God, it makes me want to throw up. Same here, but Eagles. my goodness, I mean they. <laughs> I'm not betting on a third string quarterback for the Cowboys. Well, no, and then they just cut uh, Don Terry Poe and uh, God, who was the other guy? I mean they they're like just getting rid of guys. They traded away Everson Griffin. You know they they just they're done. This season is a wash. Game over. Adios, muchachos. Uh, Casey K said, I like the Eagles to cover. Ryan Kennedy said Dallas would lose to themselves. Um, I mean, I, I think that's probably right. Uh, Damien said Monday night is going to be the worst. Yeah, we we want to skip the Cowboys. Is there anything yep. else to talk about with them? Nope. I mean, Why is Monday night going to be the worst? I think Monday night's going to be worse than that shit show. Well, I think I think the Bucks are going to absolutely destroy the Giants. That's a big that's a big Monday night football number. Uh, yes, it is. Ten and a half, eleven. I mean, well, what what do you want to set this at? Ten and a half. Well, uh, uh, ten and a half. We, you and I, have talked about our feelings on what's going on with Bovada's numbers being so much different than everybody else's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's we're... Bookmaker that has the eleven. Okay, I I, th- I thought it was it's right next to the Bovada on the. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, uh, just bet has got eleven as well. I would still like, do ten. Uh, I I, won't, I don't see. We'll, that. we'll do ten and a half. We'll do ten. I and think half. ten and a half is good. Yeah. So I think I think that'll be fine. So. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think the number matters. Like I, I think Tom Brady going up to New York, I think he hates the Giants anyway. Oh um, yeah. I mean <laughs> I knew you'd know where that was coming from. Uh yeah, I think this is a complete and total blowout. Like I just a disaster. It opened nine and a half. Uh fifty eight percent of the tickets on Tampa Bay. I don't know that the number can get high enough. Like I, I don't know that the Giants will be able to score on this defense, and I think Brady is gonna have himself a day. Yep. Same thoughts. Yep, I think I think this offense is going to look amazing. Uh, are we getting an Antonio Brown? I don't know if he's coming in this week. Um, I mean, he's got a contract. Why the hell is he there? Let's see, Antonio Brown Bucks. We will see. Uh, signed. Da, 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 da. Bucks might be screwing up a promising season by. Sign- uh, let's see. Uh, he's working out. Yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah, he might be playing. I don't know. That he, I don't know that he does a lot, but yeah, I mean, he'll be playing. I'm um, anyway. I'm I don't intrigued. think they need him. Well, no, they don't need him to beat the Giants, especially. But they're gonna they're gonna let him run out there, probably let him get his feet wet, let you know, dip a toe in the sand, and uh, and, and maybe make a little noise. Yeah, I think I think that's what they're planning on doing with him. This is a good spot to bring him in. You know, bring him in against the Giants. Uh, I mean, they got issues anyway in the secondary, so why not? Like, go have yourself a day. Uh, let's see. Joseph Gomez said Godwin's out, AB in, so why not? Uh, prop bet on my book right now is Des Bryant and AB both to record a reception this season. But yeah, if you got that early, I mean, that's that's a that's a shot. Mm, I don't know. that Des Bryant got, got signed, signed to the, the practice, practice squad. squad. Yeah. Uh, Birdie said. I don't know that he's making it. Hey, uh, Birdie said, I'm on the Giants here. Lots of stuff for the Bucks this week. Saints on deck. Uh, week nine, AB playing uh, week nine like the Giants. 
uh, plus 11. The Bucks will not be worrying about beating the Giants. Uh, uh, that's fine. Tom Brady is the, has taken over the captain of this ship. He is he has relinquished Bruce and Byron of their duties. He is the captain now, and uh, and I think they're going to be just fine. They, with Tom Brady leading them, are not going to be looking ahead. No. That's that's not what he does. You got that right. He he wants to take this out. He on doesn't the know that there's another day after after Monday. No, it, Monday with with all the pain that the Giants have caused him. It doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. It doesn't matter who the coach is. It doesn't matter who the GM is. None of that. He is going to take it out on them, and I, I am looking forward to it. Uh, Ryan Kennedy said uh, Antonio Brown might be kicked off the team by Monday. <laughs> no, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. Uh, Damien said DJ better not fall this week, just saying. Uh, Birdie said they just did against the Bears. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess. I mean, that Tampa Bay game against the Bears, like, look, it is what it is. I think after that game is when Tom Brady took over captain of that ship. I, that's, all, that's what I'm saying. I think I think he said no, no. I'm calling plays here. He said we this are is, done with this. This is my house. Like, and all of a sudden now Gronk started getting. What happened after that? Two weeks later, Gronk is all super involved in the offense. Like like the like the offense looks completely different than it has. No, they they're running plays that Tom been running for 20 years in New England that they weren't running the first six games of the season. This is true. This is true. All right. So that is all for our preview.